Today we are going to show you some of the highlights of the Frisco Native American Museum in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We visited this museum on our summer 2021 vacation to Hatteras Island. The oldest part of this building dates back to 1880 and used to be a general store and then a post office prior to becoming this museum. New additions to the building have been added since the museum first opened in 1987. The museum details the history of the original inhabitants of Hatteras Island as well as of Native Americans across the United States. The reason for the location of this museum on this particular island is that Hatteras Island used to be known as Croatoan, which may sound familiar if you know the story of the lost colony of the first English settlers to North America on nearby Roanoke Island. When English ships returned three years later to visit the colony, it had vanished, though the word Croatoan was carved into a post where the colony used to live. There's some archaeological evidence that the settlers went to live on Croatoan with a friendly Native American tribe that lived near where this museum currently stands. In fact, the remnant of an old Native American canoe was once found on the grounds where this museum now stands, and you can see that canoe in a section of the museum highlighting local history, which is near the front of the museum. In addition to that canoe, the local area of the museum also displays the types of animals the Native Americans hunted in the area, as well as what their homes looked like. By the way, stay tuned because after we show you some of what the museum offers inside, we'll take you outside where there are a number of cool exhibits behind the museum building that we really love. Outside of that local section of the museum, the displays feature information not just about the local Native American history of the Outer Banks, but also Native American cultures across the United States. There are numerous displays about their crafts, including their leatherwork, such as these moccasins, as well as examples of blankets and mats they've weaved. And examples of Native American dress. There is a display about the weapons of native peoples, which were used for hunting and to defend themselves in conflicts against opposing tribes or outsiders. There is also a display about three common types of Native American basketry, with lots of examples of these very utilitarian items that were used by most every Native American tribe for carrying, cooking, sorting, and storing. Baskets were even used sometimes as cradles. This was followed by a nearby display of various styles of Native American pottery. If you're enjoying this museum visit, please help us out by clicking the thumbs up to like our video. That would help YouTube know to share our video with more people who may enjoy it and help our channel grow. We would appreciate it. Next was a display I enjoyed about Native American dolls. They have examples of both authentic handmade dolls from numerous tribes and described what the dolls were made of, but it also included some non-native manufactured replicas that have been made as a result of the popularity of native dolls over the years. Native American beadwork was also on display. We learned that there were many different styles of this artistry in various Native communities as well. There was also an interesting display of Native American cradle boards, which were protective baby carriers that are still in use today in some Native American cultures. There is a display about the kayaks and canoes used for transportation by native tribes. And I really like this display about code talkers, which is a topic that has always fascinated me. In World War I and II, Hundreds of Native Americans from numerous different tribes volunteered with the U.S. military 
to use their mostly unwritten native languages to communicate by radio and telegraph since the opponents of the Allies had no knowledge of their language and thus were unable to crack the code and translate the messages. The code talkers were present at many important battles and their contributions saved many lives and played a major role in achieving victory. Before we head outside, we want to mention there's a gift shop that is comprised of two rooms. One is a bookstore that features many books about Native American life and history, but also many other books on other topics, many of which were older and pre-owned. I absolutely love used bookstores, so I browsed in here for quite a while. The other room of the gift shop is a typical museum store with souvenirs like magnets and t-shirts and hats and mugs, but they are also selling crafts made by Native Americans, such as carvings, moccasins, paintings, drums, baskets, pottery, and more. Their website says the gift shop works with more than 30 Native American artists to feature their work. They even have some of the artists come into the museum on Fridays, only during the summer though, so that you can meet them, see their work, and for an extra fee, even learn to make a craft alongside them. We exited the building and walked around to the back to see the museum's nature trails, which wind through several acres and overlook a large pond. The area has several signs describing plant life that you will see along the trail, and it lists some of the uses that Native Americans had for the plants. As you walk along the trail, you'll see examples of how Native Americans lived in the past on Hatteras Island, including the frame of a longhouse, which would have been covered by woven mats. The trail also includes a recreation of a dance circle, a display of fishing techniques, and an example of what a completed dugout canoe would look like. It isn't directly related to Native American culture, but they also had a round bottom shad boat on display near the canoe, as that is the official state boat of North Carolina. This trail area was a lovely walk with several seating areas along the way. The museum is run as a nonprofit educational foundation. Tickets are $5 per person and includes getting to see the museum as well as the outdoor nature trails. And your ticket is good for an entire week. If you don't have time to see everything in one day or you just really enjoyed it and want to come back during your trip to the Outer Banks, your ticket entitles you to repeat visits throughout the week. The museum is open Tuesday through Sunday in spring, summer, and fall, with Monday being the only day they are closed. Like many businesses on the Outer Banks, they do have reduced hours in the winter, as that is when there are very few tourists. They're open Saturdays and Sundays only in the winter. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Check out the links at the end of this video to see our visit to another museum that we loved on the Outer Banks called Graveyard of the Atlantic. We also have a link to our Outer Banks playlist, which is our most popular playlist about one of our favorite travel destinations. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time we're traveling through.